Most medications, clinical trials and even surgery protocols are based on the male anatomy. In a traditionally male-dominated profession, science has a historical gender bias problem. Women comprise half of Australia's population, but their burden of poor health is disproportionate. Historically, data has been collected from men and generalised to women. Women are more likely to suffer adverse medication side effects because drug dosages have historically been based on clinical trials conducted on men. Endometriosis affects one in nine women. However, few diagnostic tools or effective treatments exist. When it comes to emergency situations such as heart attacks, Women can go undiagnosed because they don't have similar symptoms compared to males. On average, every day, 20 women in Australia die from coronary heart disease. Women make up 80% of people who report urinary incontinence, and more than half are aged 50 or younger. It can have a significant impact on quality of life, as well as physical and mental health. However, many women don't seek treatment for incontinence because they may not know it can be treated or they believe that incontinence is normal. 61% of people living with dementia are women and it was the leading cause of death in women in 2020. These are just a few of the facts that inspire Victorian researchers to address and correct gender bias in research. Scientists are purposely targeting these previously underfunded areas and working at fixing this gap in healthcare that disproportionately affects women. The work I'm most proud of is really showing the impact that midwives have. And so we've been able to show that if you have 80%, 90% of women having a midwife, you'll reduce about 85% of maternal deaths, 80% of stillbirths, 80% of newborn deaths. And we know that if women, mothers, are given the best start to have their baby and to start parenting, that's good for that family, but it's really good for society, and it's really good for the community, and it's really good for economic development. So we're very focused on working with, with women from a range of different cultural groups um, to understand how we can assist them to, to age well and age healthily. I work on anemia. Anemia is the most common blood disorder in the world and it mostly affects women. In fact, around the world about half a billion women are anemic. Overall what we hope is that by improving anemia will improve the health and well-being of women and ultimately help achieve equity for women uh, in low-income countries. So when we are researching um, the deadly phases of cancer in both men and women, we're really careful to, to model that pro appropriately, look at the difference in the hormones that drive the cancers, which are very different, um, the impacts of drugs, which can be very different in, in a male and a female. We really want to study this in, in a, in a sex-specific fashion. So our research was trying to look at the effects of a exercise training intervention um, in women who were receiving uh, chemotherapy treatment for breast cancer. We were actually able to prevent the cardiac complications or the cardiotoxicity that was um, observed in the um, group that did not receive exercise training. So my research is focused on understanding uh, the biology of ovarian cancer in, and in particular how cancer cells can become resistant to therapy. My goal is to uh, develop effective treatment approaches for patients with ovarian cancer so they have a better chance of survival and to grow old with the people they love. So we are trying to target this particular type of immune cells in breast tumors. And if we can combine this target therapy with the current available therapy, such as immunotherapy, we hope we can develop a more personalized and improved personalized treatment strategy that would be a, a great benefit for patients who are having this deadly disease. Because surgery is the diagnostic gold standard and the only one that can diagnose all types of endometriosis. We've been looking at a non-invasive way of looking at the endometrium and this will be quite suitable as well for um, you know adolescents where, where nothing has been done. Until you've got you know researchers who are similar to populations that are not being studied, researchers who actually have gone through similar sort of issues, I think that perhaps that there are going to be issues that we're not going to even know exist. It's such an incredible oversight 
that half of the population has essentially been ignored in medical research. So considering sex and hormones is one goal that I think is in reach. What I see for the future is the huge importance of really focusing on how research can address issues of equity, inclusion uh, and engagement of diverse communities in our research so that the world that we're creating is a world in which everyone belongs and every child grows up strong.